Hey there, welcome to Mike's Collection, episode 297. I'm Mike, and the part of my collection that I'm going to be talking about today is all of the action figures that I purchased in the fourth quarter of 2023. Now, uh, what I've done this year to help me do my top 20 action figures of the year, which I do at the end of every calendar year, is I have been compiling every action figure I buy every quarter, putting them on my desk, and eliminating them down to like just the best of the best. And then the idea is that I'm going to take those best figures from each of the four quarters and have them kind of compete together at the end of the year in one final, you know, best of the best so I can whittle it down to my top 20 action figures of 2023. So if you haven't watched, you know, quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, go ahead and you can find those on my channel. This is quarter four. This is the most action figures I've bought of any of the quarters this year. Um, and to be honest, this is not every single action figure I bought. In the past, I included every action figure. So let's just say I bought an old G.I. Joe from 1990. I would include him in the video, but then I would eliminate him saying he can't qualify as the best of 2023 because he's a 1990 figure. Well, this time around, I just didn't even bother with that. I did buy a few older like vintage gi joes at toy shows um, i bought a couple action figures that were maybe one or two years old like just the other day at a boxing day sale i picked up one of the marvel legends eternals figures but that figure is from 2021 when that movie came out so i didn't bother bringing them out for this video so this is just the 2023 action figures that i bought in the fourth quarter of 2023 we're going to whittle it down to hopefully 20 or less so that I can move those figures along to compete in another video that I'm going to have to shoot tomorrow um, so that I can be ready for the end of the year. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun process for me, even though it can be a little, uh, it can be tough. So many great figures. I don't typically buy figures that I don't like. So trying to pick favorites from over 100 figures, and that's what I have this quarter. I have more than 100 figures here to look at. So, yeah, to get it down to 20, it's going to be tough. But uh, that's what we do here at Mike's Collection. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, uh, stick around, enjoy the process, and then be sure to come back for my next video where we will whittle it down to my very best 20 figures of 2023. So here we are. This is all of the action figures that I bought in the fourth quarter of this year. And there are a lot of them. So much so that they spilled right out of my work area. Generally, this kind of little square of space between this bookshelf and this bookshelf uh, is where I work, but these guys have spread all the way down there. So yeah, this was a very busy quarter as far as action figures go. So there's a pretty good variety of stuff in here, but it is probably by and large GI Joes. There are a ton of GI Joes in there quite a few marvel legends as well but i think gi joe's were by and large my biggest and fastest growing collection this year now uh we're going to start up front and right off the bat i've got a couple of these new mcfarland pacific room figures so we're going to talk about them in a moment but uh, the first thing i want to mention is i just had this set arrive today so this is what they call the gold label starter kit for Pacific Rim from McFarlane Toys. And there are three action figures in here. So I did technically get them in 2023. As I filmed this, it is the, uh, the 29th. So these guys should count. Um, but I wanted to do, I wanted to film an unboxing of them first, and I just haven't got around to that. Um, but I know none of those three figures would qualify for my best of the year. So uh, I'm not even going to open it. They would be contenders. So we've got a Gypsy Danger, a Striker Eureka, and a Raiju. But none of them qualify, even though I am looking forward to opening them. And I'm sure they're all really cool. I just know that they're not going to be able to compete with all these other figures that I have on my desk. So let's get started with the eliminations. Let's start right up front. Reaction figures. So I love reaction figures. I buy a lot of them. But it's very unlikely any of them are going to progress to the final round. They're just too small, and they just can't really compete with these like super detailed 
you know, larger figures. And this here, this is kind of a cute novelty. This is a Halloween Colors Optimus Prime. He's cute, but he's definitely not a contender. These Pacific Rim figures. Uh, when I heard McFarlane was doing Pacific Rim, I was excited. Then when I found out they were going to be this small, I was less excited. This is not what I was looking for. But I was pleasantly surprised by these. These are pretty cool figures. I'm really scared to move anything here. I don't want these guys to all come down like dominoes. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty cool uh, Otachi figure. But the articulation is very limited. Um, most of them only have a couple of points of articulation. The paint apps are a little lacking on some of them. So, uh, yeah, Otachi is not a contender for me. Uh, neither is this Raiju here. They're starting to fall over. Blade is not cooperating. So Raiju is going to go. And Leatherback. Again, cool figure. Um, I'm happy that we're getting new Pacific Rim stuff, but he's just too small to be a toy of the year for me. Too simple. Um, we've also got some Super 7 reaction figures here. Um, so we've got a glow-in-the-dark Godzilla. This guy's pretty cool. He's pretty cute. But not toy of the year material. So he's going to go. Same as here, we have the son of Godzilla. Minya. A very cute little figure. Cute little guy. Toy of the year? I think not. Megalon. I was very excited to get this guy. Because Megalon is one of the cooler, in my opinion, Godzilla kind of enemies. And I've never had an action figure of him before. This big cockroachy looking guy. But uh, as cool as he is, and I'm happy to have him, at the reaction figure scale, he's just, he's not a toy of the year for me. Uh, same as a lot of these G.I. Joes. This buzzer looks great. Barbecue looks great. Mecha Godzilla in these chrome colors. They all look nice, but none of them are going to go any farther. This Godzilla, this is actually just the regular color version of the uh, Glow in the Dark one I previously eliminated. They're both cool, but yeah, neither of them are going ahead. Mecha Godzilla's going. Let's take a look at some of these guys down at the end here. A lot more reaction figures. So another glow in the dark Godzilla. A Toy Colors Gigan. Toy Colors Godzilla. Another Toy Colors Godzilla. I know that might seem silly to call a toy toy colors, but this is based on an old vintage toy. Um, anyway, then we've got these Star Wars figures. I'm not 100% sure they were released in 2023. They might actually be 2022 releases. Um, I'm not really a big Star Wars buyer these days, but these guys all showed up at discount at my local dollar store. So I got them for five bucks each instead of the usual like 15 to 20 they sell for in stores. So they're cool. I was glad to get them for a discount, but they wouldn't qualify even if they counted as 2023 figures. But like I said, they might be 2022, so they might have been disqualified anyway. And then we've got some more G.I. Joe reactions. There's General Hawk, Crimson Guard, and generic G.I. Joe Pilot. All fun figures, but all eliminated. So while we're over here, let's take a look at this King Ghidorah figure. This is just a solid... Uh, Solid figure. There's no articulation on this guy at all. And he's cool, but I'm just not really into this type of figure right now. We're getting a lot of other cooler Godzilla figures with a lot more functionality. In fact, I have a King Ghidorah in my pre-orders right now that's scheduled to arrive in January. So this guy's going to be pretty redundant pretty soon, I think. So yeah, this guy's gone. Uh, then I've got a bunch of McFarlane DC superpowers here, such as Thomas Wayne, Batman's father. And then there is Tim Burton, Batman. These guys are fun. But the Super Powers figures aren't too far off from the uh, Super 7 Reaction figures as far as simplicity and everything. And again, they just can't compete with the larger, more detailed figures, in my opinion. Uh, let's see. You might notice I've got Zorro here from Boss Fight Studio. This is the one that is based on the Antonio Banderas movie. And I think he looks great. For a three and three quarter inch figure. Tons of articulation. Um, yeah, he's really, really cool. But uh, I have one of Boss Fight's figures uh, from last year that made my top ten list. One of their other Zoros. Uh, so I now have three of their Zoros. So even though this guy is really great, I think the uh, 
you know, the novelty has worn off a little bit because I already have some other Zoros from this collection. So he's going to go. And this one here is Zoro's girlfriend, is played by Catherine Zeta-Jones in the movie. So this is Elena Montero. I don't think the likeness on this figure is nearly as good. It's cool with the cloth skirt and everything like that, but uh, yeah, she's going to go. And here's some more of those superpowers. I think this Robin is terrible. I hate that face sculpt. He's going reverse flash. He's going to go uh, Peacemaker and Vigilante. Vigilante is probably my favorite of the superpower figures that I've got this year. He is really cool. I like that design, even though I don't know a ton about the character. But, uh, yeah, too simple. Gotta go. Peacemaker, gotta go. Who else is in here? Uh, there's a Wonder Woman hiding over here. I'm not super keen on this Wonder Woman uh, sculpt. I don't really love that face. So, uh, anyway, so she's gonna go. Superman, I actually do love this Superman. I might hold on to him for a second. I don't know if he's gonna advance too far, but I think he's pretty great. Uh, and there's one more loser hiding back here. This is Judo Master. A fun figure, but uh, yeah, he's not going to be a best of the year for sure. Now you'll see I've got a few more of McFarlane specific room figures here. The Jaegers are pretty nice. So we've got Crimson uh, Dynamo and Cherno Alpha. Um, but I'm much more of a Kaiju fan than a Jaeger fan. So these guys are neat, but they're too small, too simple. If one of these figures was going to advance, it would be Knifehead. This is my favorite of the Pacific Rim Kaijus. He is really cool. He turned out really nice. But, yeah, even at a five point, if this was a five point of articulation figure, I could deal with it if he had the standard five points. But this guy, his head doesn't move. There's no articulation to swivel his head, nor do his legs move. His articulation lies in his two sets of arms. He's got the big arms and the little arms. And uh, yeah, I think that was it. He's got a little bit of a swivel at his waist that barely moves. So yeah, this guy is almost, he's just too rigid. He doesn't have enough articulation, but I do think it's really great. Now you may have noticed me dancing around these figures here. This is a series of Rocketeer figures. They were a collaboration between Toy Otter and Fresh Monkey Fiction. I think they're fantastic. I love the Rocketeer. Although he's always just kind of been a standalone character. But they really fleshed him out and gave him a whole little world here. And these figures are done in the style of the DC superpowers. So they can blend right in with that collection, which is really cool. So I've got the Rocketeer, who I love. And he's going to stick around. Um, and then this is a new villain, who I think Black Phantom is his name. And he's really cool too. He's like an evil Rocketeer. I don't see both of these guys advancing, but I think one of them definitely could. And then we've got all these trooper types. I forget their names. This is, I think, Badlands Trooper and, like, maybe Arctic Trooper. I think Onyx Trooper. These guys are all, they look like cool Nazi soldiers. They've got these, like, gas masks and, you know, these cool double-breasted jackets. And they all have these jetpacks with a flame effect. They're all the same, just painted different. And I love them. They're really cool. I'm super glad I picked these up. But... I think if any of these figures was going to advance, it would probably be the Rocketeer or the Black Phantom. So I'm going to eliminate these four guys. But I will keep this guy around just in case. This was another trooper type, but what was cool about him is he had a swappable head. So he had the generic gas mask like these guys have, but he also has this cool face that you can make him a unique character with his monocle. So he looks like a really cool kind of like Nazi commander. And uh, yeah, he's got a backpack and all that stuff of his own. Very cool. So yeah, I might keep him around for a little bit. Now we've got a few Funko Pops kicking around here. I have a pretty big Funko Pop collection, but I've been really trying to get away from them. There's just too damn many of them to collect, and I have them in boxes just stacked. They're like too deep against my wall, so I can't even enjoy them by looking at them. So I've really just tried to stop buying them. But my wife bought me these four guys for Christmas, and I love them. They're awesome. Um, I'm just trying not to buy them myself, but yeah, they make for great little gifts. So I really appreciate these. So we've got Mothra, Godzilla, and these are the black light editions. So if I had a black light in here, they would probably look really cool under that. And then I've got Leonidas and Xerxes from 300, which I, I saw Xerxes. We were out Christmas shopping together and I picked this guy up and I was humming and hawing saying, man, this guy's really cool. I love that character in the movie. 
And I thought if I was going to get maybe one random Funko Pop, because I haven't bought one in months, maybe it would be that one. But then I decided against it. But my wife went back and got them for me. And she got me Leonidas as well. So that was a nice surprise. So they're cool. But in the same realm as the reaction figures, they just, come on, they can't compete with this level of detail on these other figures here. So as fun as these are to just put on my desk at work or something, uh, Xerxes and Leonidas, got to go. And Mothra, as beautiful as that figure is, I've always thought Mothra was pretty lame. So even in these bright neon colors, she's got to go. And you know what? In another year, this Godzilla might have advanced. I love this Godzilla pop. Uh, I have it in its standard Godzilla colors. And there's something about this design, about because this is supposed to be the legendary like American Godzilla. And you know how pops always have really big heads? Well, I always found that the legendary Godzilla had too small of a head. So I think when they blow up his head, he actually looks really great as far as his proportions go. And this color scheme is just beautiful. I love it. It's fantastic. A lot of fun. But again, since this is a figure that doesn't move, no articulation at all, I just I can't see myself putting it forward. I've just got too many other great figures to look at. So Godzilla's going to go. There are very few Transformers. I think there might be two Transformers in this whole stack here. And this is Ransack. This is a figure that I was excited to get because I've never had a figure of this guy. This is a vintage G1 Transformer who has not been redone since like 1985 when he first came out. So it was exciting to get a new version of him, transformed into a Locust. He's mostly a retool of the kickback figure that we got uh, earlier this year or last year. Anyway, so I was glad to get him. But yeah, he's by no means a toy of the year for me. He's just not that exciting of a character. So he's going to go to. So we've made some progress. We're at least down to my you know, intended workspace. So I've got everything down to just this square here. Uh, most of the little figures are gone. So we're going to get into the 6-inch and larger. Um, there are still a couple of these Masters of the Universe. These guys aren't quite six inches. They're more in the like five-inch category. So you'll see I've got animated Beast Man here. This is from the brand new Filmation line. I love this Beast Man. I think he's great. Uh, so he might stick around. Same as this He-Man over here. I have a Filmation He-Man in my collection already in the uh, like seven-inch scale. But I think this guy... I don't know, it's just, it's so great to get a He-Man that looks like he just jumped off of the cartoon. So good. So yeah, I'm not sure if he'll make it to the end, but he's still a contender. But there's another Master of the Universe character that's hiding back here. This is Man, uh, Manny Faces. So this is the guy, you can turn his little head there, and he's got a robot face and a human face and a monster face. It's hard to do it with one hand right now. But uh, yeah, this guy's fine. But this is just a recolor of a toy I already have. They, they changed up his face sculpts. But uh, yeah. yeah, otherwise it's just, it's not a contender. So he's going to go. And now there's some cool new characters here. So Lady Slither. She's a member of the Snake Men. Obviously she's not a snake man, so she is a snake woman. But she's got this really cool snake body that we've never seen on a Masters of the Universe character before. She's really nice. But uh, again, I think she's just a little too simple. You look at the like face sculpt on her compared to, say, a Marvel Legend. Like, let's just pop over here to Clea. Beautiful face sculpt on here. Just so much more detail. That, uh, yeah, Lady Slither, I think she's an exciting addition to the collection, but she is going to go. Fangor. This guy is really cool. Um, I have a version of him in the Classics collection that I love. He was one of my best of the year. Uh, when he first came out a couple of years ago. This new version of him for the Origins line is very cool too. So yeah, he might stick around for a little while. Chun-Li. This is uh, not the type of figure I usually buy. I don't really... I'm not really a gamer. And uh, so, and I'm not really into anime and Japanese stuff. So yeah, chun Li's not in my wheelhouse really. But I did play a lot of Street Fighter when I was young. Chun-Li was one of my favorite characters. And this figure just looks incredible. So I think both of these two are going to survive for now. Um, let's move Beastman out of the way here so we can take a look at some more of these figures. I'm going to have to get aggressive here. Blade, this is a cool Blade figure. It's an upgrade from my previous Blade figure. I'm just not a giant Blade fan, so this guy is going to go. Indiana Jones and his father, 
Dr. Henry Jones Sr., and Indiana Jones' girlfriend, Marion Ravenwood. Um, these are all cool figures. Uh, my wife got me Indy and Marion for Christmas, so much appreciated. Um, but previously in the year, I put Indiana Jones in his actual adventuring outfit. That figure went forward, so he's a contender for my best of the year. I don't see Indiana Jones in his like tuxedo here advancing. That's just not his most iconic of looks. So he's going to go as great as it is to get Sean Connery as Dr. Henry Jones Sr., He's just an old man in a suit. It's pretty hard to compete, you know, against monsters and robots and all that stuff when you're just an old man in a suit. So he's going to go. Oops. And Marion is going to go as well. It's cool to get this character. You know, uh, never thought I would own a figure of Marion. So I'm glad that we finally got one. And it looks good. The sculpt is nice and everything. But yeah, just not a favorite of the year. All right, some Marvel Legends here. Lady Bullseye, I was excited to get her. You know, it's always nice to get kind of contemporary characters, not just the same old characters that have been kicking around since the 60s. Um, you know, she was introduced. It feels like a new character, but I think she's actually probably like 15 years old. But uh, this is her first action figure in any format. Um, and yeah, she's great, but she's not Toy of the Year. She's just a little too simple. You can see she's a pretty basic female body sculpt with uh, very little detail. Um, I'm not sure what this, the holes in her back are. She has no backpack or anything, so that's kind of lazy. They maybe could have filled those in. So yeah, not Toy of the Year for me. Now here we have Moon Dragon. Now this is a character I just got for Christmas, and I haven't had a chance to talk about her yet. Generally, I have reviewed most of these figures uh, like prior in, in the year, so if you want more details on any of these guys, you can track down an old video. Um, but there's a few of these toys that I got for Christmas that I have not previously talked about on my channel. She's one of them. So I will be doing a more in-depth review later. But spoiler alert, I don't love this figure. I just, I don't love this character. So anyway, Moon Dragon's going to go. Um, we've got, this is Photon, once known as Captain Marvel. This is her in her Captain Marvel outfit. I don't like this figure either. I'm not super keen on this character. I think this figure is like head is too small or something. I just, I just never liked this costume. So she's gone. Now I've got a few X Men characters here. I'm not a hundred percent sure they were released this year. They might have been last year releases. I just got them this year. I just got them within the past month. I got them for uh, they were on sale on Amazon. And the only reason I bought them is because I wanted the build a figure pieces that they came with. But I really didn't care about these characters. So none of them. I don't really like the characters, and I don't like these toys very much. So this is Monet St. Croix. Not interesting. Chamber. A little more interesting, but not interesting enough. And then possibly my least favorite action figure on this whole desk is this loser here, Kid Omega. Oops. Anyway. So yeah, we're going to get rid of Kid Omega. So we've got a few more Marvel Legends here. We've got Clea, who I love. Doctor Doom looks pretty cool. Drax, awesome. Doctor Octopus, great. Aunt May, not so much. <laughs> this is a fine figure of Aunt May, but I never would have bought this figure had it come by itself. But if you wanted this Doctor Octopus, you had to get this Aunt May. They came together in a two-pack. So we'll deal with Doctor Octopus later, but Aunt May is definitely going to go. All right, we're starting to get into the G.I. Joes. There's a ton of G.I. Joes here. Um... Let's go back up front for a second. So there's another Masters of the Universe character that I missed. This is Snake Tila. So this is Tila when she was transformed into a snake. It's kind of neat, but, you know, they, I wish they had maybe sculpted her to look like a snake. All they did was take the standard Tila and paint this kind of scales on her. Kind of lazy, I think. So it, it looks neat, but it's, it's not great. So she's going. Um, Midnight Sun Iron Man. So this is Iron Man in black and gold. It's not even the first black and gold Iron Man I have in my collection. It's not my favorite look for him. I would not have bought this figure. Um, but I had to to get the Build-A-Figure piece so I could build the mindless one, this big rock creature over here, which we'll talk about later. So yeah, since this Iron Man wasn't even on my in intended to buy list, he's going to go as well. All right. 
These guys are still hanging around. I think I'm going to cut Superman loose. I love this figure. I love the retro style. Um, I love the cloth cape, the proportions. Everything about him is just great. But he is basically a redo of a figure from last year. Um, all they've done is kind of taken away his red shorts. They've given him look, his more contemporary look. Uh, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to cut him because I, I really do think he's fantastic. But he just lacks some of the newness because he's like a redo of a previous figure. Almost identical. So anyway, sorry, Soups, but you're going to go. Um, all right, let's get to some G.I. Joe's. Now, G.I. Joe, they have the potential to be all 20 figures on my best, on my top 20 of 2023. Could end up being G.I. Joe's. There's so many good G.I. Joe's out this year. And, uh, yeah, like where to begin? But having said that, there are some relatively easy eliminations for me. Right up front here, I have the Crimson Alley Viper. Now, I love the Alley Viper. This little thing flips up there. You got his face there. He's got his cool riot shield. Lots of great gear. Like, even the bad G.I. Joe figures are great. And this guy is by no means a bad figure. The thing is, I had the uh, the original color Alley Viper when I was a kid. The orange and blue one. We already got the orange and blue Alley Viper in Classified. And this is just a repaint. So, you know, he's cool. But kind of like Superman, he lacks that newness. I've already got a figure that looks just like this in different colors. So because he doesn't really bring much new to the table, he's going to go. Um, these figures here, these are from NECA's Defenders of the Earth line. So I've got uh, Lothar. Uh, I forget this guy's name. I think it's Xerax or something. And then I've got Mandrake the Magician. And these figures are awesome. Last year, um, NECA's Phantom action figure made it to my best of the year list. And the year before that, their Ming the Merciless made it to my best of the year list. So I'm really impressed with what they're doing with this line. Like Mandrake, he's got, he's got extra hands. He's got this cool stick with like the clear little crystal at the top. Cloth cape with a wire in it so you can pose it. Look at those shoes. This guy's definitely got the best shoes on the table. So yeah, these figures are great, although I'm not 100% sure they were released in 2023. It is possible they were a 2022 release. This is the These three figures are the entirety of Wave 2 from this line. I bought Wave 1, which was the Phantom, Ming, and uh, Flash Gordon. But I held off on Wave 2 just because I don't have the same attachment to these characters. But uh, I recently found the whole wave on sale at a deep discount. So I was excited to get them. Um, and they all look good. But Lothar is probably my least favorite. I don't know much about this guy. And he doesn't really have a gimmick of his own. He doesn't have any like superpowers or anything. So really great sculpt. Great face on this guy. But I'm going to eliminate him. Uh, Zarak, this kind of... I think he's like an ice robot or something. He looks awesome. Like He, he looks like he's right out of a cartoon. But I think I'm going to eliminate him, probably because I just don't have any attachment to the characters, so much so that I can't even remember what his name is. And uh, just because I'm not sure that he's a 2023 release. And really, I try to only include action figures that were released this calendar year. So he's going to go. Okay, so I shimmy some things around. You know, I was going to let Mandrake through, but I really think I might have to let him go. It's a really amazing figure. NECA did a really good job. But... You know, I just don't have any attachment to this character. So he's going to go. Sorry. All right. This is Night Force Tunnel Rat. Just got this figure. Um, I got the regular colors Tunnel Rat, uh, I think, in quarter three. I can't actually remember if I pushed him through or not. But uh, if a Tunnel Rat was going to make it to my top ten list, it would be the standard colors over the Night Force colors. At least, that, that's my first inclination. He does look really good in these colors here. But uh, because this is the second release of this figure from this year, he just doesn't bring enough new to the table. So he's going to go. Buzzer, he can stick around for a minute. Vipra, she's pretty cool, but she's just made up of reused parts. She's mostly the blue ninja with a new... Uh, she's got Zartan's skeleton mask. So yeah, she's cool, but again, just not enough new. And here we have Python Patrol Cobra, I think, Officer. 
or just Trooper. I can't remember. He's cool. I like the Python colors, but I've already got a ton of Cobra Troopers in the standard blue. So, yeah, this guy is just, again, not new enough. There's just too much competition here. Tiger Force Flint. I don't love the stripes on his face. I don't love the head sculpt on Flint anyway. So, yeah, he's going to go. Big Ben, he's not a character that I ever really have a strong attachment to because I quit collecting G.I. Joes as a child before Big Ben came out in, like, 1991, I think. But this is a solid figure, so he's going to stick around for a minute. Uh, these guys are from the Kiss, like, support pack. So there was a three, a three trooper pack. I got this for Christmas, so I haven't uh, talked about it on my channel yet. I will in an upcoming episode. So you get a Cobra Officer and a Cobra Trooper in these black and red colors to match the Hiss Tank. They're both awesome. I love them. Cobra Troopers you know, are always good. But because I already have the Troopers in my collection in the standard colors, and there's just too many other cool new figures. So I'm going to get rid of both of these Trooper types. Uh, now we've got the three Hiss uh, Drivers. Well, we've got Hiss Driver, Hiss Gunner, and his tactician. So these came with my his tank, which is an awesome uh, new vehicle. And if you're wondering if that's going to make my list, it's not. It doesn't qualify. As cool as it is, it's a vehicle. This is my best action figure of the year list. Um, and definitely not all three of these guys are going to go through. So I'm going to get rid of the uh, female gunner. Um, and if one of these two was going to go through, even though he's new. And kind of cool. We've never got this paint job before. I just have too much nostalgic love for the classic Hiss driver. So this guy's going to advance. Um, and this guy is going to go. Uh, Crimson Baroness. So this is a nice Baroness, but it's not my favorite Baroness. I prefer the retro card one. And, you know, she looks cool in red, but Baroness Black is her standard color. So, yeah, she's going to go. Uh, Shooter, I think she might stick around. Televiper, he might stick around. Shockwave, Hawk. We got Helix hiding behind Big Ben there. I've got this Mecha Godzilla from Bandai, I think. And he's from the same collection as that King Ghidorah I eliminated earlier. He is just kind of a, like a vinyl figurine. He's, you know, he's kind of an awkward size. He doesn't really fit in with a whole lot of stuff in my collection. He doesn't really move much, just his arms move. And I think his head turns a little bit. So it's a nice sculpt and everything, but uh, there's just too much competition this year. Sorry, Mecha Godzilla. So beyond the G.I. Joes, we've got some more Marvel Legends hiding here. Some of the larger ones. So we've got Blob. I just recently got him uh, for sale. And he's a cool figure. He's a big, bulky guy. But I think he's kind of a stupid character. I don't love his outfit or his powers or his haircut, or really anything. So, you know, he's a classic Marvel character. I had to have him in my collection, but he's kind of a doofus. So he's going to go. Now, you might have seen this box hide in here. This is a set of those Rocketeer figures that I got in black and white, and I decided to keep it sealed. Most of these are characters we've already looked at, like the Rocketeer or the Black Phantom, but we did get this exclusive uh, pilot figure. What do they call him there? Sky Captain, I think. Uh, Spy Captain. So yeah, these guys are cool, but because I didn't open this box, I can't really say these are my best figures of the year, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove all five of these figures, as cool as they are. Now, Detroit Steel here is really cool. He is big, and he's heavy, and he's impressive. Let's just get him out here and take a look at him for a sec. You can see how he towers over most of my other six-inch figures. He's very nice. But I just don't have any attachment to this character. I did read the comics that he appeared in, but he's just not a character with a whole lot of like personality. And this is a redeco of the Ironmonger finger. <sighs> Ironmonger figure. So even though it's really cool, a lot of that credit goes to the Ironmonger. Um, so yeah, he's cool. But he's not top 10 for me, so he's going to go. I apologize for the choppiness of this video. I'm trying not to do too many edits, but I'm a little sick right now, so I'm trying to edit out all my little coughing fits. And, uh, yeah, I'm a little struggling to, to talk a little bit here. 
a little stuffed up. But, uh, okay, what do we got? All right, so we've kind of talked about those Joes. We're going to let them go for now. I don't think we've talked about Mutt yet. So this is Mutt with his dog, Junkyard. So those guys are a pair together, and they're both pretty cool. I just got him for, uh, for Christmas, so I haven't had a whole lot of time to really fiddle around with him. But he was like, uh, I had this guy when I was a kid, and I always really liked this character. Uh, here's Python Patrol Copperhead. I really like Copperhead, but I prefer his standard colors, which came out, I think, last year. So, uh, yeah, as cool as Python Patrol is, I think I'm going to get rid of him. This Doctor Doom is based on the old Secret Wars action figure that I had as a kid from the 80s. He's cool, but it's not my preferred look for Doctor Doom. I like Doctor Doom in his kind of standard tunic. So, as neat as this is, kind of a retro throwback to my childhood, I'm just going to have to let him go, I think. So, just try not to let Clea fall over. And we'll get rid of Doom. Drax. Man, that's a nice looking Drax. Look at that face sculpt on this guy. And if this looks unfamiliar to you because you only know Drax from the movies, this is what Drax looked like in the comic books for many, many years. Um, he looks more like his movie version now, because that's what fans seem to know. But, uh, yeah, he used to be just kind of a big dummy, um, kind of like a Hulk in space. And he was never a favorite character of mine, because he was such a big dummy. But uh, this is a really cool-looking figure, so he might stick around. This here is another guy from the Hiss support pack, so I already eliminated the trooper and the officer. This guy here I might hold on to, though, because... True, these aren't the original Range Viper colors. They look killer. I, I really like this color scheme. And the other Range Viper just came out this this quarter as well. So I don't think both of them will uh, will advance, but I'm not sure which one I like better. So I'll have to think about that. Mole Rat, he's going to stick around. Um, then we've got Tomax and Zamont. They're in their Crimson outfits. They came in the same box set that the Crimson Zarana came in. They're cool. They look good. I like their little gold display bases and everything. But uh, considering that, you know, we had Tomax and Zaymont in their standard colors released previously, and I even put Tomax on my best of the year list last year, I don't think there's any need for these guys to advance this year. So let's talk about a few more of these figures in the back. This here is the Super Adaptoid. He's like a big robotic villain that takes on all the traits of the Avengers. This is a really cool figure. I really like him. So he might stick around. This here was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive repaint from NECA, or no, from Diamond Select, of their Gypsy Danger figure from the first Pacific Rim movie. And this guy's got a really nice paint job on him. It's all kind of metallic. Whoops. Some guy's falling down here. But he's got all this nice metallic paint with all this, like, scuffing and everything on there. Anyway, it's a really nice paint job. But... I never really liked the Gypsy Danger design. Just, I just, I just don't. So this guy came in a two-pack with this Gypsy Avenger, who uh, I like this design. The thing is, I already have this figure in the standard blue colors that he appeared in in the movie. So this gray, re this gray repaint is cool, but it's not Toy of the Year for me, so I, I can get rid of both of these guys. So here we have Bishop from the X-Men animated line. I don't even like Bishop as a character, but I think this is a really nice looking figure. So he's going to stick around for now. Here is the one other Transformer that we had in here besides Ransacked. This guy's name is Nacell, and he is a Seeker Jet. He is a repaint of a Starscream figure and a dozen other figures. I literally have this, this toy in probably 10 different colors now. And I do love it. I will keep buying it in whatever colors they make. But at this point, it's definitely not a toy of the year. I've, you know, the newness factor is definitely gone from this. However, I, I do think this is one of the nicer paint jobs that we have gotten on this thing. But anyway, he's going to go. So we've got a few more G.I. Joes here that we haven't looked at. So we've got the Steel Brigade. They came in a two-pack. So this is kind of a generic trooper. Um, so we've got a male version and a female version. And these guys are both cool. I like the Steel Brigade concept, and I like these figures. But I think in a world where we just have so many 
Joes with cool costumes and cool personalities. I think these generic troopers just lose a little something for me uh, as far as personality goes. So, like, the female one is definitely going to go just because she's kind of she's kind of small and petite, and I think the male trooper is the better of the two. But, uh, ah, I don't know. I'm not ready to get rid of him yet. Tripwire is pretty great. Um, I really like the character of Tripwire. I had this guy when I was a kid. This version has a removable helmet for the first time, so you can kind of see what he looks like under the mask. He came with a robot and a rat sidekick. But uh, I almost feel this is one of the uh, figures where maybe the, the updated detail of Classified didn't help him. Like, I don't know. I don't think he has a very nice looking face underneath of the helmet. I kind of like not knowing what he looked like. And I feel like this outfit, maybe it's more realistic, but he feels like too padded now. He just looks a little bit too busy. And he doesn't quite look like the tripwire that I loved as a kid. So, yeah, I think I'm going to have to let him go. All right, so what else do we get over here? This is Firefly, the Cobra Saboteur. He's a great character. But we already got a previous version of Firefly in the classified line. And this one isn't different enough to really justify him being Toy of the Year. So he's going to go. There I have the translucent or invisible Tigra figure from Super 7's Thundercats Ultimates line. I just got him for Christmas, so he's pretty new to me, uh, but he's awesome. I love that clear. He's not 100%. He's like maybe 99% clear, but then they do have some paint on him, so you can see around his eyes and some of his tiger stripes, his Thundercats logo. But I think that was necessary. If he was completely clear, he probably wouldn't have any, you know, personality. I think those eyes being painted and everything is uh, just the right amount of paint. So he looks awesome. Um, then we've got Motherboard. Now, she is an impressive figure. She's from the Masters of the Universe Revel uh, yeah, Revelation, Revolution, whatever. Um, cool figure. Really cool wingspan. It's like 24-inch wingspan. She's got like cloth cape and everything there. And she, I would consider putting her through, except for the fact that I just, I don't know anything about this character. Nobody really does at this point. Um, she was introduced at the very end of season one, and she'll probably play a more prominent role in season two. But uh, yeah, there's just too many other characters here that she's competing against that I uh, love from my childhood and stuff. So as cool as she is, she's not cool enough to knock any of those guys down, so I might as well just get rid of her now. And then this Cobra Commander figure, which you can't really see, but this came with my Hiss Tank, and it is a really nice figure. It is possibly the best Cobra Commander figure we have ever gotten at any scale. It's that classic, classic 80s look. The other versions that we've got in the classified line have been a little bit more contemporary, a little bit more uh, ceremonial. And uh, this guy's great, but as you can see, I have not opened him. And I won't go into the reasons why, because I already talked about that in my His Tank review. But because I haven't opened them, I can't really make him one of my toys of the year. I really need to handle these things to really get a, a good sense of them. So Cobra Commander and Motherboard are both going to go. Okay, we're making progress, but we've still got a ways to go. i got to speed things along. So, all right. I'm just going to go at these guys, rip the Band-Aid off. If any of these figures are going to go through... Uh, when I first got this pack, I thought maybe it would be Black Phantom, because not only does he look like the Rocketeer that I love, but he's something new and fresh. But man, that Rocketeer just looks so crisp and perfect. So if anybody was going to go through to represent this line, it's going to be the Rocketeer. So I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of that Trooper guy and the Black Phantom. Fangor, really nice, but I prefer the Classics version. Um, Anyway, I'm not going to go on about it. He's cool, but he's just not going to make it. And out of these Filmation He-Mans, if one of them was going to go through, I think it would be Beastman. Uh, he's just more interesting. And as I mentioned, I already have a Filmation He-Man in my collection in the larger scale. They did release a Filmation Beastman, but I never got him in that larger scale. So, yeah, I think Beastman's going to stick around, but He-Man is going to go. All right, Doc Ock. I haven't really talked much about him. I have a few Dr. Octopus in my Marvel Legends collection, um, but this is the first one that has actually wire tentacles that you can bend 
and uh, it's awesome. This is one of my favorite looks for Dr. Octopus. So he's going to stick around. We got Slash from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Ultimates. And this is a really great figure, and I got him for a great price this year. Um, Super 7 Ultimates have topped my list before. Their Mutagen Man was my number one figure, I think, two years ago. And this guy's great, but I'm going to kind of cop out and say, I think this figure might have been a 2022 release. Um, yeah, I'm really not sure. And even if he wasn't as incredible as he is, um, this isn't my preferred look for Slash. Like, I have a, a NECA Slash figure based on the video game design that I like even better. So, as cool as this figure is, I don't think he's going to advance. Sorry, Slash. All right. So, the G.I. Joes are the ones that are really clogging things up here. Uh, is there anybody else I haven't talked about? Um, this is a Super 7 Ultimate Godzilla. I actually just got this guy for Boxing Day. Um, he is based on the old Shogun, like uh, the old Shogun Warriors toy from the 1970s. And, you know, to some people he might look completely stupid and ridiculous, but uh, I find him very charming. So, yeah. And then we've got the Mindless One. This was the Build-A-Figure from the Midnight Suns wave of Marvel Legends. The one that I had to buy Blade and Lady Bullseye and everybody in order to complete him. He's cool. There's something about a Build-A-Figure that just feels like more of an accomplishment uh, when you finally build him. It costs you a lot of money and possibly a lot of time hunting down the figures to build him. I love this effect of the like energy kind of smoke bleeding out of his cycloptic laser eye. Very cool, but uh, he again suffers from being uh, kind of a generic trooper. The same thing that hurts you know, the Steel Brigade and some of these other characters. If they've never been fleshed out, it's hard for me to fall in love with them as a character. So this guy is, as he is named, mindless. He's just a big, you know, lumbering dummy. So really cool figure, but I don't think he's going to be a toy of the year for me. So he's going to go. So I'm down to my final 25, if I counted correctly. So I'm getting there. Like I said, I wanted to get down to 20 or less before I signed off and moved these guys on to compete in my next video. But I think there's more cuts I can make here. Uh, I don't know if I've talked about Chuckles yet. This is another G.I. Joe figure. He's uh, very cool. He was an exclusive. Okay, you can see there he's got his lay. I don't know. It's hard, having a hard time focusing on him right now. But uh, yeah, he's a cool figure. Trust me. Um, the Televiper. So I've got the Python Televiper and the Standard Televiper. Uh, both are cool. And both of them came with a Trouble Bubble flight pod. So I kind of have to consider that as well because last year I considered Serpentor came with his chariot. And anyway, so that, but it still kind of makes them even since they both came with a flight pod. Uh, I don't know. I think I prefer the classic design in the blue and purple over this kind of much, let's say, uglier yellow and gray. And both of them had swappable heads. So you'll notice like this is a white guy. This is a black guy. They each came so I could swap him out so he could be a white guy and this guy could be a black guy. Um, so that does not factor into my decision here. It's just, uh, I think I like the classic design. So I'm going to let go of the Python Patrol guy. Um, you know what? Steel Brigade, I'm sorry. You are going to go. There's just too much competition. I want to whittle things down. And same as Mole Rat here. He's cool, and this is an original character, which we don't get a whole lot of them in the classified line. Most of them are based off of, uh, you know, classic figures. That lighting is going to shit here. Okay, so yeah, most of them are based on classic figures, but this guy, he's cool, and I appreciate that Hasbro's taking some chances with some new characters. He had, like, an alternate head with a zombie face, which, you know, depending on who you are, what kind of mileage you get out of zombie stuff, that can... Uh, either really enhance this figure for you. I've kind of chosen to display him without it, so he's just a standard, you know, trooper. So yeah, he's cool, but yeah, he's not going to be Toy of the Year for me. Perhaps it's time to consider who's a, a lock for me, who's definitely going ahead. And we'll place them over there. Godzilla, he's going ahead. I don't know if he's going to make it to my finals, but he's, he's fun enough, he's new enough for me that I'm not ready to cut him. Tigra, he's a lock. 
Beastman's luck. Dr. Octopus, luck. Chun Li, luck. So there we go. We got five going forward. Clea is a luck. I don't know a ton about this character, but I'm just so impressed with that face sculpt. She's lovely. And Bishop is kind of in the same. I think she's the prettiest action figure I got this year, and I think he's the handsomest action figure I got this year. Even though I don't know much about either of these characters, I just really love these toys. Uh, do I, is Bishop a lock, though? Uh, I don't know. I don't know if he had much of a chance once he gets to, like, my real, you know, the, the best of the best. I don't know if he's going to make it, but uh, let's see. Chuckles. Chuckles is a lock. Um, Shockwave. We didn't talk much about him. This is a great figure, and he was a childhood favorite of mine. Uh, he's the G.I. Joe SWAT Trooper. He looks great, so he's absolutely going through. Um, Hawk, which we didn't really talk about either. So that's the, uh, the leader of G.I. Joe, their general. Uh, great figure. I love that he's got a little white streak in his hair now. You never heard that before. Really great design overall. Hawk is going through. Oops. As is Agent Helix, which is this one here that we didn't really talk about. God damn it. Everybody's falling over there now. So Agent Helix. He's really great. I love that design. Love her weapons. Everything is good. All right. So how many we got there now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I've already got ten going through. These guys are all still maybes. The Hiss driver is going through. He's for sure. Um, I think I'm gonna cut Buzzer. Um, he's cool. I, I've always liked Buzzer. Um, one thing that bothers me is that he has sunglasses that he always wore on, like the vintage toy had glasses sculpted to his head. And he always wore them in the cartoon. This one, the glasses fit really awkwardly. They fall off. Um, and yeah, I think that reason alone is I'm going to take Buzzer out of here. Uh, let's see. Big Ben. Range Viper. All right. We're, let's make a decision about the Range Viper. So there he is, black and red, that creepy black skull. And then there he is, the blue. Uh, which one is better? I don't know. They're both so cool. I think I'm going to put the blue one through. So blue is a lock. Okay. You know what? Even though I hummed and hawed about the which televiper should go through, I think just seeing who the televiper is up against, um, there's so many cool Joes with Hawk and Helix and Shockwave and Range Viper and Chuckles. And considering all the Joes from earlier this year, like the Snow Serpent and the Eels, uh, this guy's just, he's not going to be in my top 20, so I might as well just cut him loose now. Um, Mutt could be. So we'll put Mutt through. If I was torn on Mutt at all, this junkyard, it's the best looking junkyard we've ever got. So that's the deciding factor there. So we've got these guys, these guys, and Bishop Lane back there. Okay, so I have 13 going through for sure. And then I have seven over here that I'm still thinking about. So I could push them through as my final 20. Um... But I think I'm going to cut Big Ben. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, he's just not somebody I have any childhood attachment to. I think this is a really cool figure. He came with an alternate masked head and everything, which so you could kind of troop build him if you wanted to. It's a solid figure. But again, I just there's too many characters that have they haven't beat as far as looks and personality go. He's just a little too plain. Great, great figure, but he's gonna go. So this could be my final 19. I did not expect to push two range vipers through, but I'm still not convinced that this guy is not 
awesome. Like, he is awesome, but is he better than this guy? Could they both be on my top 10 list? That would be kind of unheard of. Uh, Shooter, I really love her. Great design. She's a new character, relatively new character. Um, Bishop. Drax. Those head sculpts on those guys are just too good. And then here you see the Super Adaptoid in full. He's just got a really nice sculpt with a lot of texture in his costume and everything. I'm really impressed with him. He's a lot of fun. And yeah, and the Rocketeer. So yeah, what the hell? Why don't we do this? This is my top 19 of quarter four. So here we go. Nice final group shot. My top 19 of the fourth quarter. So these guys are going to advance into my next video to compete with my finalists from the previous three quarters. And yeah, that should be fun to do. Anyway, so I guess that's it. Okay, so I've completed the process. I made it down to 19 figures. Were you surprised by any of the cuts that I made? I was, to be honest with you. There was a couple of figures here that I thought for sure were going to advance. Um, like Tripwire, I thought I was going to push him through. Uh, I don't know. But in the spur of the moment, I have to make some tough cuts. And uh, yeah, two Range Vipers. Hmm. Anyway, we'll see how they fare uh, tomorrow when I pitch these figures, when I pit them against my uh, my survivors from the previous three videos. So yeah, if you enjoyed this, make sure you come back for that. So uh, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this, make sure to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, leave me comments below. I'm curious to hear what your top 10 are. So, uh, or your top 20 or whatever. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. Or if there's anything here that you blatantly disagree with that I cut, uh, you know, it's just a matter of opinion. So whatever, there's no right or wrong here, but I'm curious to see what you think. So yeah, by all means, feel free to leave me some comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Ciao.